Are you unsure about how to schedule your USA student visa appointment? In this video, we will cover everything you need to do to schedule your F1 student visa interview appointment. It will include which forms to fill, how to fill them, required fees, picking the best dates, and more. Scheduling your visa appointment could get complicated quickly and cost you valuable time and money. Don't worry though, we've made it easy. By the time you're done watching this video, you will have everything you need to do to do it right. Hey Green Card Easy viewers, you're watching the first step in our F1 student visa interview series, scheduling your visa appointment. This video is the second video of a multi-video playlist. If you want to start with the first video, the F1 student visa overview, check out this video. We've also left link to the playlist in the description below. If you're interested in these topics and haven't subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out. We're also looking forward to hearing from you, whether it's a question, a comment, or anything specific you want us to cover. Leave those in the comment section below. You've most likely been accepted into a US college program if you're watching this video. Congratulations, you've already accomplished so much. The F1 visa interview will be your final hurdle, so let's get it out of the way. To begin with, let's make sure you've met two prerequisites. One, you've received your I-20 and you have it handy. Typically, admitted students receive them from March through May for the fall semester and from September through December for the spring semester. You will need the information from your I-20 to schedule your visa appointment. Two, your appointment is not more than 120 days before your program start date. In other words, count back 120 days from your program start date. That is the soonest you should schedule your visa appointment. You can find the program start date on your I-20. If you meet both these criteria, then schedule your interview. If you're waiting on either, it's still a good idea to understand the process, so follow along. By the way, we will refer to many different pages throughout this video. We will leave the links to them in the description below, so you can find them quickly. Here are the steps you need to complete to schedule and attend your visa interview. One, identify the US consulate or embassy closest to you. Two, research appointment wait times. Three, complete form DS-160. Four, pay the visa application fee. Five, schedule your visa interview. And six, pay the SEVIS fee. For most students, these six steps are enough. However, an extra step applies to students of select nationalities. They need to pay a visa issuance fee after their visa is approved. This is rare, but we will cover the seven steps to be thorough. If you know the nationalities of students who have to pay the visa issuance fee, let us know in the comment section below. Now that you're familiar with different steps, let's take a look at them in detail. Step one is to identify the US embassy or consulate closest to the city or town you live in. You need to schedule your visa appointment there. Technically, you could schedule it in any US consulate in your home country. However, we recommend scheduling it in the city closest to your home as that's what the consular officers prefer. Let's take a look at few examples to get you familiar with what to expect. Since we have viewers from all around the world, we can't cover all nations. However, we will cover India, Brazil, and Philippines. As we look through these, you will be empowered with the knowledge to find out the information that applies to you. We can do that by visiting the usembassy.gov page as we've pulled up on my computer here. As you can see, there are a couple of different ways how you can identify or find out where your consulates are and you start that by identifying your country. So you can enter your country name here up top in the text field or you can select your country by the country letter from, from this list. 
So let's begin by selecting I for India. And as you see, it'll bring up all the countries with I. You can then go and select the country that you're looking for. We've pre-selected this. And so once you click on India, it'll bring up India's page. And as you scroll down, you will see that India has a few different embassies or consulate general. As you can see, there's one in New Delhi. There's one in Chennai. There's one in Hyderabad. There's one in Kolkata. And then there's one in Mumbai. So your goal is to find out which consulate is closest to you and make a note of it. Let's take a look at how the Brazil experience looks like similar to before. Let's select B from the country letter list, which will bring up all the countries with the letter B in it. You can scroll down and find out Brazil, click on it, which will bring up the Brazil's page. And similar to India, Brazil has multiple consulates as well. As you can see, there are uh, multiple ones, uh, five specifically. And let's say you're in a city or a town that is closest to Sao Paulo. So you can make a note of that, that that's the one that you need to apply, apply in. Going back, let's take a look at Philippines. So similar to before, let's click on P, which will bring, bring up all the countries with P. Let's locate Philippines, which is right here and click on it. Clicking on it will bring up Philippines page. And contrary to India and Brazil, Philippines just has one embassy, which is in Manila. So if you are in Philippines, you have to make sure that you go to this one. And uh, you can apply the same principle for your country. You essentially select your country and then go down and locate a consulate that is closest to you. Make a note of the US embassy or the consulate closest to you. You will need this information to schedule your visa appointment. That takes care of step one. That was easy, wasn't it? Step two is to research appointment wait time. Let's visit US Department of State's student visa page to do that. As a reminder, we've included links in the description below. Once on the website, locate the appointment wait time section and check out the scheduling wait times. As before, we will review these for India, Brazil and Philippines so you get a general sense of what to do and what to look out for. You can do that by visiting the student visa page on the state government's website. Now keep in mind, the page may change a little bit from time to time, but the content should stay the same. Let's scroll down till we find this box, which will give us the appointment wait times. As you can see here in the previous step, we identified Mumbai, Sao Paulo and Manila as the cities that we wanted to look up the wait times for. Let's do that by typing in the name of the cities in this box. I'm going to type in Mumbai and it will auto populate and bring up the city. You can select it. And if you notice this little table down here will refresh to show what the wait times are. You are interested in finding out the student exchange visitor visas. And in case of Mumbai, at the time of this recording, the wait time is nine calendar days. Uh, keep in mind, these are not business days. These are nine calendar days. Uh, let's take a look at Philippines next. And so we had Manila. And so let's select Manila and it shows 52 calendar days. So keep in mind, that's a lot. So you have to make sure that the city, so keep, it's always a good idea to keep a pulse on the city that you're looking to get your appointment in. And then finally, let's check out uh, what Sao Paulo does over here. And so I've typed that in and it shows 38 days. So you, you see it could be light as nine days or 38 or 52. So it can vary greatly depending on your consulate. Step three is to complete the DS-160 form and print out the confirmation page. You will need to carry the printout of this confirmation page to your visa interview. The form takes anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half to complete. This form is the same for everyone. It is really long and can be frustrating to fill out. To help with it, we have detailed instructions on how to fill out this form on our website. If you use our instructions, you will probably be done in under 30 minutes. So do yourself a favor and check it out. 
We recommend referring to our instructions while filling out this form for best results. We point out things you should know and clear up the confusion that students typically encounter. To ensure you understand what the form looks like and what to expect, let's check it out. We will leave the links in the description below. So once you're on this page, there are a few things you should note. As an example, this form has some browser restrictions. When you look at the, the instructions on the left, you can see that they clearly specify use only Internet 11, Internet Explorer 11 or higher, Firefox, Chrome 58 or higher when using this application. So stay away from Safari uh, and Microsoft Edge, as they've said. And so let's start by selecting a location where you will be applying for visa. So this is a step. This is a location you should have identified in your previous step. We will, we will use Mumbai as an example. So you start by selecting this and something to note here is the drop down list starts with the country name. Now this is a really large list. So one of the shortcuts you could have is you could just hit the key with the country name that you're looking for. In our case, it's India. So let's just hit I, which will bring it down. Uh, which will take the, the list down to I and then we can scroll down and select India Mumbai. That will save you some time. Next up, you will need to put in the code that has been shown. So let's do that by putting in by typing in in the code here. And then you can hit start an application. It will give you this computer fraud and abuses acts notices. Read through it. It's pretty standard language. It's important to read through it. But once you read through it and if you agree, check this I agree checkbox and and then it'll ask you some secondary questions uh, just in case you want to retrieve your application. Once you save it, that's when it's going to come come in handy. So let's select one and um, there are a bunch of options that you have. And uh, let's say in what city does your nearest sibling live? And we can just put in Delhi as an example. One of the things you should note is make a note of this application ID over here. It is very important. You will need that to retrieve your application. You don't have to complete the application in one setting. Sometimes you may want to take a break, but you would want to save this application ID so you can retrieve it. And then similarly, make a note of, of the answer that you provide. So once you've done that, you can hit the continue button, which will take you into this form. As you can see, this form has a bunch of stuff that you will need to fill out. This is a rather long form. We will leave a link in the description which talks about each of these, which links back to our website. And we've broken down this form in detail. We highly recommend you check it out there. Uh, we could spend an hour easily going over this form. So we just wanted for the sake of this video, we wanted to make sure you understand how to find this form, what to expect. And for more detail, check out the website that we will link to in the description. Once you've completed your DS-160, you will know whether you need to take your visa interview or it has been waived. Even if your visa interview has been waived, you need to pay the visa application fee which is covered in the next step. Next, print out your DS-160 application receipt. If you are eligible to apply for a visa without an interview, you will receive the interview waiver confirmation letter. Print it out as well. You've hit the halfway point. Congrats on a job well done so far. Let's look at the next step. If you're enjoying this video but haven't subscribed to our channel, Hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on our future videos. Give us a like as well. Your positive feedback motivates us to keep going and fuels our passion. Now let's get back to the remaining steps. Step four is to pay the visa application fee. Everyone needs to complete this step, regardless of whether your visa interview has been waived or not. This step varies slightly based on your country of residence. Primarily, it's the method of payment that changes. It's pretty straightforward, but let's look at a couple of different examples to get familiar with the process and the websites. 
as before, let's look at India, Philippines, and Brazil. To do that, let's start by visiting the US Travel Docs page at ustraveldocs.com. Note that at this point, you haven't selected your country. You will have to do that as the process for paying the application fee differs from country to country. So to begin with, start with US Travel Docs page and then go and choose your location. It's very important to note that if you've Googled this, you may end up accidentally landing on a certain country's page. So it's very important that you go to ustraveldocs.com and then select your location. For the sake of this video, we will select India and Philippines. So let's start by selecting I for India. It'll scroll it down and then anchor at this I, expand this section if it doesn't open up for you automatically and then select India. And as you can see, it'll open a new link or a new tab which is specific to India and that is indicated by this word India next to US travel docs. Now note that the websites will look different from country to country, which we will see in a second, but your goal is to locate the application link on this page. So it asks us to choose a visa category to begin with. Now F1 student visa is a non-immigrant visa category. So let's click on that and it'll bring up some important notices. It's okay to read the important notices, you should, but for the sake of time and this video, we will click out of it and we will click on how to apply for a non-immigrant visa application, which will bring us these steps. And what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to pay our visa fees. So let's click on this link over here, which says pay your, pay your visa fees and it shows us different types of visas. Again, we are, we are trying to select the F visa. So we will click on the student academic visa link, which will then take us to the student visa page. Now let's scroll down to a point where we can see how we can pay the fee, application fee. And I may have missed it over here. So let's see, here it is. It says to apply for an F4M visa, you must pay your $160 application fee. So let's click on it, which then takes us to a new page which shows the different payment options. And it says bank and payment options here. Now this will vary again from country to country. Sometimes it could vary from city to city as well. So, so, so be sure to make sure, so be sure to find out what applies to you. In case of India, it's common across entire India. It doesn't vary depending on the consulate. And if you scroll down, it'll give you a bunch of uh, information, but the options, payment options are either national electronic funds transfer or NEFT. You can pay by mobile phone or Citibank or Druk Bank or DRUK. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this bank's name. So one of those banks, and it will have some additional information such as some, some restriction on when can you book your interview or when can you start your interview booking process once you've paid the fees and it'll be listed on, on the page. In this case, it says after you've made the payment, you have to wait one business day before you're eligible to start making an appointment. So keep that in mind. It can vary depending on your method of payment as well as as well as uh, from country to country. Now let's go to Philippines and see what do they have going on. So I clicked on P, expanded the P section, and then now I've selected Philippines, which will bring up a Philippines tab, page rather, in a new tab. And their page looks different. The information should more or less be the same. So again, as before, we're looking to pay our application fee and so let's look under the non-immigrant visa application and apply for a fee. I'm going to click on that and it, it'll bring up some instructions how to apply the step one. In step two, you have to pay your visa fee, read the bank and payment options page. So let's click on that link and it tells us what the fee payment options are. So on the fee payment options you have, you can either pay using cash at bank, or you can make an online payment using PesoNet. Um, 
the fee at the time for a student visa is 160 so they they give some additional information on if you're going to use the cash at bank payment you have to print out this deposit slip or you can use peso net, peso net for your payment as as we saw with india there is a slight time delay after you pay your fees to when you can go into the system it recognizes your fees have been paid and then you can start to make an appointment so in this case if you've made the payment at the bank between midnight and 3 p.m you can start your interview booking booking process anywhere from 4 to 24 hours after payment so this may vary slightly if you make an online payment uh, there are different options as well so you can do the same you can follow the same process depending on which country you live in you go to us travel docs you select your country and then from there on out you go and see what are the different payment methods available to you once you're done paying the application fee save your visa application mrv fee payment receipt you will need it for the next step keep in mind there is a fee payment processing time it depends on your payment method the processing time will be listed on your country's website after the payment processing time has elapsed you are ready to move on to the next step schedule your visa interview your process varies if you've received the interview waiver confirmation letter you don't need to schedule a visa interview appointment follow the steps outlined in the interview waiver confirmation letter to obtain your visa we will cover that in a separate video soon look out for the link in the description below continue with the following steps if you need to schedule your visa interview appointment step five is to schedule your visa interview appointment this is the moment you've been waiting for let's look at the steps you need to take to schedule your visa interview appointment technically as mentioned in step one you could schedule it in any u.s consulate in your home country however we recommend scheduling it in the city closest to your home as that's what the consular officers prefer before we look at how to schedule your interview it is important to note one small yet important detail some consulates require visa applicants to submit documents and complete biometrics such as fingerprinting before their visa interview appointments others don't to find out whether this extra step applies to you or not visit your country's u.s visa application page it is critical to know whether this extra step applies to you and if so by when do you need to complete it commonly this step must be completed at least a day before your visa interview appointment it may vary so you can give yourself enough time and pick your visa interview appointment accordingly by doing the research now the good part is that both these appointments are scheduled using the same visa appointment reservation system so you won't miss them however knowing it ahead of time will allow you to plan better let's take a look at few different examples india brazil and philippines as before i am on ustraveldocs.com which is where you apply for a us visa to begin with you choose your location let's click on i for india and then let's select india which brings us to india's travel page and then from there on out let's click on non-immigrant visa because f1 is a type of non-immigrant visa once you click on that it takes you to another page which brings up these important notices let's ignore those for now but you should take the time to read them on this step as you can see we are on schedule your appointment so let's click into that which takes us to the schedule your appointment page and up top they mention that applicants for u.s visas are required to appear in person for an appointment at the visa application center known as the vac and the visa interview at the u.s embassy or consulate so they are very clear stating that you have two steps that you need to complete and then they specify you must schedule the VAC appointment at least one day before the interview appointment date. And luckily, you can schedule both these appointments using the same system. But it's always good to know whether you have one or two steps before you're in the uh, before you're making the the reservation. 
So similarly, let's see what we have for Brazil. Let's go up top and select B for Brazil and then select Brazil from there and it will bring us to Brazil's page. I'm going to change the language to English and I see visas up top. When I hover over it, it brings the secondary menu and I'm going to read more on the non-immigrant visa types. And let's scroll down a little bit to see what they have mentioned or what options they have. And as you see, they have an apply for a visa option, which is what we're trying to do. So upon clicking on it, it reveals this extra information. And they say those applying for the visa for the first time and who are between the ages of 14 to 79 must schedule two appointments with the exception of Porto Alegre, where only one appointment at the consulate will be scheduled. So depending on where you're applying in Brazil, you may have one or two. So it's important to understand what applies to you. They also have some additional information which you should read just to make sure you have everything you need uh, in order to complete the step successfully. And now let's look at Philippines. So let's click on P and Philippines. And it brings us to the apply for US visa Philippines page. And let's scroll down and then under non-immigrant visa application, I'm going to click on apply for a visa and it brings us to this instructions page uh, with overview and how to apply. Let's scroll down to see which one we need to follow. And so here it says, once we're ready to schedule our appointment, we have to complete certain steps, which we've done, which is primarily filling out DS-160. And then they specify, visit the US Embassy on the date and time of your visa interview. So I'm reading through this. Nowhere does it say there is an application service center appointment or any other appointment needed. So residents of Philippines don't need to do their biometrics separately. They're asking you directly to go to the U.S. Embassy on the date and time of your visa interview. So as we saw, we have three different things in India. Everyone needed to take an appointment at least one day before their actual visa appointment date for their biometrics. In Brazil, depending on where you are, you either needed to do that or not. And in Philippines, you don't need to do it. So it's important that you find out what is it that your country and specifically your consulate or embassy requires you to do. And you can do that using ustraveldocs.com. Now that you know whether the extra step applies to you or not, it is time to schedule your visa interview. You will need the following documents. One, your passport. Two, your I-20 for the university you wish to attend. Three, your DS-160 confirmation page from step three, and four, your visa application, MRV fee, payment received from step four. Let's begin by visiting the apply for the US visa page. We're on apply for a US visa page. If you haven't applied for a US visa before, you will need to create a new account. So let's start by doing by clicking, let's start by clicking on the new user link over here, which will bring up the registration page to begin with, select your country and, and then your personal details. So in this case, we will select India and let's put in an email, uh, put in the actual email. We're not, but email for demo purposes at gmail.com. And then you can put in your first name, you can put in your last name, you can put in a password. And as it says, it should be at least eight characters and contain both letters and numbers. So we will type in a password that matches this criteria. And you have to select the privacy policy, verify that you're not a bot and then hit submit over here, which will create a registration. Let's just save it. So we don't have to remember this. And then it'll bring you 
to the apply for a US visa for your local country because that's the one that you completed. So now, once you're on this page, you can go ahead and complete your visa application. We will show you the first few steps to get you started. So let's start with clicking on new application here up left, and then you will select non-immigrant visa and it'll give you some disclaimer, read it, make sure you understand it before you click OK. And so we're selecting a non-immigrant visa because F1 is a non-immigrant non visa type. And then you can hit continue, which will then ask you, please select your country or state of residence. This may vary slightly depending on what country you're in. And we will go with Maharashtra, which is because we're selecting Mumbai, just for the sake of this example, you may be elsewhere in a different country. And then it'll give you some language of interview. It may be a local language to your country. We will select English. I would imagine most of you, if not everyone, selects English since, since you are coming to the United States and as part of studying in the US, TOEFL is required. So I am assuming your English is proficient to study in English here. Next, you will select a visa category that applies to you, which will be student and exchange visitors here since we're applying for an F1 visa and then you can hit continue and then it'll bring up which visa class do you need to select. So you will select an F1 visa type, assuming that's the one that you're applying to and and then it'll give you a summary of everything you've selected. Make sure that this is selected correctly. The non-immigrant visa, your language of interview is English. You've selected student and exchanges visitor visa, specifically F1 class and the post of your interview. Now this is automatically calculated for you based on, based on the, on the, on the city that you mentioned earlier, which is nice takes guess, guesswork away. And then you can continue again. It's going to give you some terms and conditions. You can select the terms and conditions. You have to agree to them. And then this brings up to, this brings you to a page which has asked you for a bunch of personal details such as your passport details, your nationality, your name, your country of birth, gender, DS-160 confirmation number, your phone number, uh, address, service number, university name, and zip code that you're wanting to go to. Clearly, this is for demo purposes, but it should be pretty straightforward from here on out and a similar process regardless of which country you're in. So um, we hope you find this simple enough to complete it on your own from here on out. Once you scheduled an appointment, print out the confirmation page. Your visa interview appointment is scheduled, but there is one last step you need to do to ensure you're all set. Step six is to pay the service fee and print out the confirmation page. Before you pay the fees, find out the current application fees. Visit the service page on the Immigration and Customs Enforcement website, commonly referred to as ICE. The service fee can be paid using a credit card, a check, a money order, or Western Union. We recommend paying it by credit card as it is instant and easiest to complete. You cannot use a credit card to pay the service fee if you are a student in, from or born in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Cameroon and Gambia. More information is available on the Department of Homeland Security's website. Make sure you review it to ensure this information is still accurate as it changes from time to time. If you don't have access to a credit card or if you're from a country that isn't allowed to use a credit card, pay using Western Union. If you do this, ensure your visa appointment is not within three business days of payment. If neither option is available, go for a money order or check. It takes two weeks or more to process, so we highly recommend avoiding it. We will post a separate detailed video of how to pay the fees. If you're interested in it, follow us and turn on all notifications so you don't miss it. Visit fmjfee.com. So we're on the I-901 fee page, which is service fee page. And to pay the fees, 
you can see this big button up top which says pay I-901 fee. So we can start by clicking on that and it'll ask you for a service ID, your last name, given name, date of birth. And by the way, your last name, given name, it should all match the names on your passport. So make sure you type it in. Um, we don't have an actual service ID to show you, but once you type this number in, what it's gonna do is it's gonna, on the next page, it's gonna verify your service ID matches your I-20 and your last name, all your data matches. And then if there's no error, then it's gonna take you to the next page. And on the next page, it's gonna ask you whether you wanna pay by credit card or whether you wanna pay by Western Union check or money order. Uh, select what you need to do. It's a pretty straightforward form. You should be able to get through. And then once you've gotten through with it, next thing you do is if you've made an online payment, it should be fairly instant. If you use Western Union, it would take a couple of days, uh, three, if, three to be precise, three business days for it to process. And if you've done money order check, then it can take upwards of two weeks. But once that time passes, what you need to do is you need to you can check your status by clicking on the I-901 status. You can actually, let's go back to the home page and then this button up top, which is I-901 status. Once you put that in, once you select that, it'll bring up the status page, put in your service ID, put in your last name and your date of birth, and then check your status. If it has been received, if you've made an online payment, it should be instant, instant. If you've selected Western Union, wait for three days, up to three days and check. As soon as it's ready, it's gonna tell you that, hey, uh, you're, you, you've paid your fees, everything looks good, so make sure you print that page out and you should be all set. Once you've made the payment, check out the payment status by visiting the check I-901 status page. Print out the payment confirmation page and save it with your file, as you may need to show it to the consular officer at the time of your interview. With these six steps completed, your appointment is secure. However, remember the seventh step we mentioned in the beginning? Step seven is to verify whether you need to pay an issuance fee after you receive your student visa. Visit the student visa page. To see whether the issuance fee applies to you, go to the student visa page on the state government's webpage. This is a page that is familiar to you as you've seen this in step one before when you were selecting the US Embassy or Consulate, scroll past that to where you see select your nationalities to see your issuance fee. And what you're basically doing is you're typing in the name of the country that you're gonna, that, that you are present in and you are scheduling or you scheduled your visa appointment in. If you're on this step, you've already received, you should have already received your visa, but if you're proactively looking for it, whether this fees applies to you or not, go ahead and type in a country. Let's type in India over here. And as soon as you type in, it'll take you to a different page, which looks like this. There's a lot of, lot of text on it, but what you're essentially trying to do is you're trying to see whether the issuance fee applies to your visa type. And your visa type in this case is the F student visa. And if you see F1 visa, it brings up this table and it says fee none. So for Indian residents or Indian nationals rather, there is no issuance fee that you will have to pay. Let's go back, let's look at Brazil. And on Brazil, you will see a very similar page. Click on the F, F type of visa. And as you can see, there is no fee for Brazilian residents either. And then finally, since we have since we have looked at India, Brazil, and Philippines, let's do that now as well. And in Philippines, it brings up a similar page. And then it has, let's click on F, and it also has none. So as you can see, you can check your country by following the same process. And then you want to look under this F1 visa classification to see whether there is a visa issuance fee that applies to you or not. That concludes this video. We will cover what to expect during your visa interview in the following video. We will break down the interview structure so you know how exactly to answer the questions to ace the interview and get your student visa. 
you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. Remember to leave your comments and questions below. While we answer questions here, the faster way to get a response is by asking us in our discussion boards at greencardeasy.net slash discussions. I'm Gaurav Musle, and from all of us at Green Card Easy, thanks for watching.